Hey friends, before we get into the video, I just wanted to let you know I joined the HyperX Partner Program. So what does that mean and who is HyperX? Well, HyperX makes some amazing gaming peripherals from mice, keyboards, headsets, and even RAM. My computer actually has HyperX RAM and it's been running great for over two years. I also have one of their wireless mice and I've been using it with a wireless mouse pad and it is such a cool setup. But yeah, if you guys want to check out their products, if you go to any of my recent videos, I'm going to have links for both the HyperX products and affiliate links from Amazon. So if you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and check those out. I've recommended some cool stuff that I actually use or would use. Um, so yeah, if you get anything cool, let me know. And thanks for supporting the channel. Let's get into the video. Hey friends, welcome back to Crease Pattern Class 6 Part 2. So this is Part 2 and there's going to be a Part 3. Um, but we're basically covering these two structures. So the first one is that one, and the second one is this one. And these two structures are from what was explained in Crease Pattern Classics Part 1. Uh, but we're actually going to fold these. So the concept for these two classes will be how to approach harder structures. And as we kind of analyzed before, there's some weird stuff going on with these hinges. Um, the level shifters are a little bit difficult, and there's some weird stuff going on here. So we're going to dive into these. The part two is going to be about this section and part three will be about this one. Uh, so let's jump into it. All right, so go ahead and I've posted a link to the crease pattern specifically for this part. Go check that out, go grab it, get yourself some Kami, fold your accordion grid and pre-crease it. Note that I didn't pre-crease any of these hinges as we don't really need hinges and um, I pre-crease the level shifters. Um, I pre-crease these in the directions they're supposed to be. So these are all valley. The top ones are mountain. So go ahead and check out the crease pattern to make sure you got that. Here I have an example of it folded. And you'll note that, yeah, we have color change. And that's what makes this a little bit difficult. Um, so we'll get into it first. Um, but yeah, make sure you have this all ready. And we're good to go. So the first thing we're going to do is tackle these level shifters. So I'm going to refer to the crease pattern here. So if you get confused, just have your crease pattern handy or a picture of it nearby. The first thing we're going to do with level shifters is just like the, I think it was class two or lesson one, class two, something like that, um, is we're going to fold the pleats. And there's a lot of them here. So this should all be kind of review, but because they're stacked next to each other and there's a lot of them, it's a little bit more difficult, so um, feel free to try this without watching the video. See if you can figure it out. If not, I'm going to go over a really quick and a little bit more advanced but easy way to get these done. Uh, they're not too bad. Um, let's get into it. All right, so for our layer ordering, we notice we have the long lines uninterrupted um, this way. So we're going to do these first, and then the... Uh, long vertical ones, they have a little bit of change right here. You see that? So that means we're going to do those second. Um, so if you don't know what that means, I will show you right here. I'm going to start off with this mountain valley pleat horizontally. And we're going to do the top one here like this. And then we got one more that happens right here. That pleats here. So we do these first because they're uninterrupted. And then we do the second parts. So here, this will be like the beetle that I designed that I had you all do. Just like this. And then do the same thing on the other side. And most origami box pleated beetles have some similar um, structure for shells. It's, it's quite common, um, this kind of stacking or some arrangement of it. Okay, so here is the first set of vertical pleats that go through the whole thing. And then we have one more set, which is right here. And this will just fold down like that. And then we have the second one that's here. Just like that. And so this is just to set up our level shifters, make it really easy. Um, all we did is these pleats. All right, 
All right, so we're gonna take a quick look at the crease pattern. I'm showing a little bit more advanced way to do these. Um, and this assumes you already know how to do the crease, uh, or the level shifters as in the old classes. Um, but as I mentioned, we're gonna start with the middle just cause that's generally easier. And then we'll do these outside one second. So we have six in the middle in these rows. Um, and that follows right here. And yeah, once again, we're going to take a look uh, a little bit easier way. So if I'm, I'm actually going to flip the model around like this. And you can do this if you don't pre-crease it the right way, but if you pre-crease it the right way, this is going to be so, so easy. So we're going to start with this middle, and we're going to start with the bottom ones. And you can kind of see our crease lines right here. So instead of doing all the work for the crease patterns, all we're going to do is push it in, kind of like it's a mix between a sink fold and a reverse fold. Um, but it just closes up like that, and that, that actually forms our level shifter. Um, so it's kind of like a hidden move in the back <laughs> a, a little bit, so that's why it can get a little bit confusing. Um, but when you do it, it's actually a really easy maneuver. We're going to do the same thing for this side. Just push it in, and you want to make sure it's along your creases, and this just kind of automatically forms our level shifter. So we look at it from this side, or yeah, it's this way. We have two of our level shifters done. So now we're just going to do this top one, which is a little bit different because it's all mountain. Um, so this one we actually have to go from the top side, just like this. Push that in, and boom, there's our level shifter. Just like that. See? Pretty simple. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'll just show you guys again. We're going to find our level shifter right here. This is our crease. You're just going to open and push it in. And this way is very, very satisfying. Um, just because it all kind of fits together and it's super easy to do. I'll push this one in. Very little maneuvering of the paper and it's very precise because you're just following your creases just like that so you have should have this shape on the bottom we're going to flip it over so we can see now we just have this top one remaining we're going to do that one really quick and again it's it's pretty much the same you just push it in so even though this is mountain all the four sides and normally level shifters are valley all four sides you, you, you do the exact same maneuvers and it just turns out like that um, and again, this is just for the shape of it. And in theory, it will look like it if you flip the shell this way. So that's why we have the level shifters. But we need the last set of them to really get the shape. Um, so if that confuses you, you'll see what I mean. All we got left is these last two right here. So once again, just push it in. Just like this. You see it? Just like that, folds closed, and on this side it valleys closed just like that. And we got the last side here, which is normally like this, so we flip it around, and you push in this level shifter just right there, see that? Push it in. Same as all the others. Uh, so as you can see, this is a very, very quick way to put in the level shifters. Um, I know sometimes I'll do them where I don't pre-crease it, but if you, if you go through the effort to pre-crease them, you can do it this way. It makes it really, really fast and really, really easy. There we go. Just like that. And now... We should be able to re-collapse everything um, to the mountain and valley format. So we're going to have go here, and oops, this guy got a little stuck, just like that. And this flips down, like this. Oh, did I lose the level shifter? I lost the level shifter. Oops. So recollapse it, once you're done, recollapse all the mountain and valleys, and we'll get kind of like a little stick that's two grid units wide, and it's going to look like this. 
And that is our beetle shell. So if we look at the crease pattern fold of it, we can compare the shape. So this shell shape is now all done. Um, so now all we got left is this part. Um, so if you got through this part and if you got through it without watching this video, make a props. If you got through it with watching this video, also make a props. Um, you're basically able to do most beetle shells that are box pleated. Uh, but yeah, practice that and get really familiar with it. If it was kind of tricky for you, definitely practice this. Um, they're fun maneuvers, and if you can understand the way they work, you can actually start folding a lot more complex designs, and a lot. you might be able to start designing your own beetles just based off this similar base. All right, so we're going to start with the next section, which is not really hard, -er, but it's a little bit more confusing. Um, once again, this is part of Damien Maliki's Sun Beetle. And as you can see from this, we have color change for both like the small antennae and some of the legs. Um, so how is that done? And if we look at the crease pattern, this looks like an, a regular Elias stretch. But you can note that the outside edge, normally it would be mountain, but this time it's valley. And so to change up the layers like that is what causes the color change, but it also causes the collapse to be a little bit different than most box pleat models. So it is totally okay if you pre-crease everything mountain, as I did, but the first thing we're gonna do is collapse this Elias stretch. Um, so once again, it's pretty similar, except we're starting with a valley fold on the outside, just like this, instead of a mountain, mountain, uh, mountain fold. And so it might take a little bit more work to actually crease it because you have to flip each layer um, of our grid but you know it's not too hard it's just a regular Elias stretch on both sides I'll try to stay in frame <laughs> like that and like that and you notice when we get to here we have a little bit of an interesting zigzag and these are all mountain just like that um, and they're just mini miniature Elias stretches that are just one unit technically so we're going to collapse that down just like that and our last one folds just like that and this this step right here this is what causes most of our hinges right here but now you might be noticing boys this one doesn't look like this one what's going on here and also if we pay attention to the hinges the first line here they're all mountains so there's an x that's all mountains but if we look at ours we have a sequence of mountain and then valley so obviously something's not right well here's where it gets a little bit tricky um what is shown here and this is used for color changes even in 22.5 models is your favorite fold the outside reverse fold so this is actually an outside reverse so if you take this flare and you outside reverse fold it, increase these down mountain, just like the crease pattern, and then you recollapse it, you'll notice we get our proper color changes, just like that. And if you try to brute force just the hinges by tracking which ones are mountain valley, that might be a little bit difficult but if you just treat it as an outside reverse fold, all of these will match up and you can see we have a matching figure representation from the crease pattern fold. Um, obviously the outside edges, these are just linked to the other part of the leg. So I guess it's kind of like that. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that wasn't too tricky. Um, these When you see these kinds of hinges and you see color change in the model, the basically the lesson here is to observe part of the hinges normally we ignore all of them but ignore part of them to see if they're used for color change and if they are sometimes it'll be an outside reverse fold sometimes it'll be a swivel fold um, but in this case it was outside reverse and if you look at it all as a whole this looks really scary right it looks like are these middle flaps what's going on you know especially with this x in the middle it definitely looks like it could be some form of middle flap but it's not um, it just hinges outside reverse folded. So I hope you guys learned something a little bit from folding this. It's a little bit more tricky, but after doing this, 
hopefully it gets your mindset into realizing a lot of things that look scary really aren't that scary. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this episode. And the next lesson is going to be on this section. Um, so stay tuned for this and let me know what you guys think. Uh, see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze. Now I'm